All right, guys, we're back with another video, and I'm going to start this off with a question. And I'm giving you a hint as to what the answer is. So I want you to guess what martial art this video is about. This is a Southeast Asian martial art that does not get nearly enough attention, and it looks like Moi Boran. It reminds me of Moi Boran. Okay, now I want you to pause the video, leave your thoughts below, and let's see how many of you get it right. This is a tough one. You guys get it right. I'm impressed. So here we go. Jumping in. Pow, pow. Inside, inside fighting. Yeah. Dangerous, dangerous martial arts. Pow, pow. Ooh, ah. Okay. And the answer to the question is Bokator. I'm talking about the Cambodian martial art of Bokator. Now, let's just jump into a little bit of the history. And over here, we're going to play a little video. So, this martial art is. Very similar to Muay Thai, Muay Boran. Uh, but what's interesting, if you look at the movements here, they just totally remind me of it. And much more Muay Boran than Muay Thai. And what's interesting about this style and what's kind of tragic is that this is a martial art that dates back supposedly over 1,700 years. And it was completely almost wiped out during the Khmer Rouge regime. And there's a grandmaster, San Kim Shan, who came back to Cambodia after the regime. And he found 10 masters. That was all he could find. And he revitalized the system. Now, the system is incredibly unique. Incredibly unique in the sense that it's very, very similar to Moi Boran. So maybe not that unique. But there are some things about it that are very different. I want to show. There's some weapon stuff that I really like in this system. Let's just pull up. I don't know why these are not automatic. But here, you can see these cool weapons that they use. Which, there's like a lot of... And I know it says Bukator Indonesia. But this is a Cambodian martial art. This is a competition they do sparring in this event they do all types of stuff but the movements are really beautiful and you'll see there's kind of like there's there's sword play there's more traditional weapons that look like what you would find in farming uh and so there's a rich history here what i like about this is it does seem like a totally complete system it's a totally complete system that hyper emphasizes knees and elbows and takedowns which i think is super cool considering knees and elbows and kind of close quarter work are my favorite way of fighting. So I'm just going to right off the bat say that I love this system. I'm going to right off the bat say that if there was a Bokator school near me, I would train it. This is a super cool weapon, by the way. This is like an instinctively effective weapon. First of all, it's sharp on the tip, but it also protects the arms. And it also can make the arms like a devastating weapon. So you not only have a blade, like a stabbing weapon on the tip, but, I mean, it's just incredibly dangerous. And you can see by the movements, they're doing a lot of groundwork, which is something I noticed in this that you just don't see in Muay Thai. You do see a little bit of it in Muay Boran. Uh, but, again, this almost also has influences, in my opinion, oddly enough, from things like Silat. You'll see in some of their self-defense movements, and they're willing to change that line. I talk about that a lot. They're willing to go from the – so that was that demo. They're willing to go from the high to low line. So this is something that's very, very rarely seen in martial arts. It's very rare in martial arts that a martial art is willing to change its level and then fight from a new level. What do I mean by that? You look at a boxer, you have your stance, you're upright. You look at Thai guys, they fight upright. But you look at Silat guys, they'll fight you here, and then they'll drop down to your waist, and they'll fight super low. So they almost have two levels they're fighting you on. And I've discussed this before. Think of a horizontal line going through my body, and a lot of people understand this line. Right, so if we were to call it this line, even in boxing and Muay Thai, in every style they have this, right? The center line, you can fight on the inside or you can fight on the outside. If you're inside my arms, you're inside fighting me, okay? And a lot of Mexican boxers are very good inside fighters. Then you look at a guy like Floyd Mayweather, Lemachenko. They're great outside fighters, which is why they take less damage. They can circle outside, and then they're only fighting half the man. They're fighting half the body. Now, this is always acknowledged in martial arts, striking styles. Even in wrestling, you go to the outside, right, to get to the back. But what's rarely acknowledged in striking styles is low line, high line fighting in terms of your actual posture. So most striking styles will acknowledge you can kick low, but they won't acknowledge that you can drop low and then elbow the thigh, that you can drop low and then attack the legs with your arms and still protect your body. Okay. And you do see it in Silat and it's something that is absorbed into Bokator. I don't know. If it came from Silat influence, I don't know if it influenced Silat. I don't know the history there, but it is interesting to see. Now, again, I just want to show a little kind of video here of the movements. These are so beautiful. I have a, an affinity, I'm not going to lie, for elbow-knee-based systems, 
Southeast Asian martial arts in general, I find incredibly appealing. And this one seems to encompass a vast array of the richness that exists in those styles. Now you can see they're not fighting one person in these forms. They're fighting multiple people. They're fighting, elbowing people behind them. They're walking forward with tight elbows and they leave very few openings to be attacked. Um, and again, it has a traditional element, which I love in Southeast Asian martial arts, which is a flavor that you only find in those styles. You only find it in Muay Thai, Muay Boran, Boca Tor. Like there's this certain quality to the movement that I find just so incredibly beautiful. Uh, this is one of those videos where I'm like, I just love this style. You know what I mean? I, I love the richness of it. Now, like I said, I'm a fan of, I don't know what this cutaway is to this guy. It's like, let me stare at you as you, you do these movements. That would be, if, if I could have any role as a martial arts instructor, I'd want to be the guy who's just like up in the castle staring down at people and like giving them angry looks. Uh, but again, I think the movements in Southeast Asian martial arts, incredib incredibly beautiful. And there's, again, there's a quality and a flavor to it you do not find in other styles. Uh, and again, very, very few martial arts out of Southeast Asia seem to be so heavy on elbows and knees, which in my opinion are the most important tools to have. Because, and I'll explain why in striking. The reason I like elbows and knees is because there's a rule in the universe. Anytime I extend my arm to punch you, even if I do it to protect myself, like I punch shoulder high. This is like a habit I have. I punch shoulder high to hide my chin and hide myself and be as protected as possible. But no matter what, if you look when I punch, there is some part of my face that becomes exposed. There's a beauty in the universe that when I extend myself to you, I open myself up. Right now, if I want to hurt you, if I want to punch you, I want to grab you, that leaves me open. Now, the one rule to this, the one kind of breaking or what you would call an exception to this is elbows. Because when I elbow, if you look, there is no real opening here. There is no real, in fact, my elbow functions as a block. If you learn to block, especially bare knuckle, right? In boxing, you can leave your hand here. And in, in, in Muay Thai, you can kind of leave your hands here. But if you're learning to block bare knuckle, you will learn to comb your hair. You will learn to hug your head because you need to protect everything. Now, the elbow does this. This is the motion of an elbow. And so elbows are incredibly, incredibly effective at both protecting and attacking. They're one of the few movements in martial arts that exist that work that way. And again, when you use an elbow, you close the gap. You take the person out of their element, which is fighting you at range. People want to hit you here. They're angry. They want to come at you and just catch you on the end of their fist. You pass that and you fight them close. And Bocator seems to focus heavily on this, which again, I just, I just love that as a focus of a martial art. Now, Here's something interesting. They also have what I would call a Y crew in Muay Thai. I think they call it a Kun crew. Someone can correct me on this if I'm wrong, but they dance in this style. It's very, very dance oriented. Um, and, you know, this is the pre-fight where they're doing it supposedly to bring in their ancestor warrior spirits to help them in the fight. But the, it, the difference here between Muay Thai and uh, Bokator is that in Bokator, the dance continues into the fight. And you'll see it's it's very interesting. Like this looks like classical Muay Thai before a match. But as we jump into the match, let's just jump forward a little bit. There's I don't know what that is, but they're still dancing. Like they keep everything. They're dancing real crazy. But then they just explode into fighting. It's almost like a weird, like this guy's the exception to the rule because most of them don't dance that much. But you'll see I have other videos. He's like inviting him and he's, he's it's almost ridiculous, right? But these guys clearly hit hard and kick hard. Um, and I was surprised to see this and they continue on the ground, by the way, it's almost like there's jits, jujitsu, it's going for an ankle lock, which is something you just don't see in a lot of other combat sports. That was something I really loved about this. They continue fighting on the ground. So kudos to them. I don't know how effective they are on the ground, but this kind of, so you'll see, this is the exaggerated version of Bocator sparring that I saw. This guy reminds me of like a Disney movie, like dancing. And then just to, in Disney movies, they don't attack like this. But once the attacks start, they clearly do go for it. It's just like out at range. They're just very loose and dancing at each other. And again, they continue on the ground. Again, if there's no activity like this where it's starting to stop and it stalls, they'll break. All right. So uh, very interesting. But let's just look at some what I would call more effective sparring. That, And you'll see there's, that was a beautiful knee under the punch. Again, they're going back to this kind of dance 
and then they just explode into attack. I have a video here of sparring where they almost don't dance at all. Now, look, there is value in kind of these movements because you can't read the kick when the person's in constant movement. Like these guys clearly know how to fight. These guys are fast. They're using distance well. So this is a little bit more modernized than the previous version. But like this seems like the consistent theme. Like you do have to do this to keep the judges on your side, I think. Um, which is interesting. But it does look like an effective style when they spar because when they come into range, they, again, they punch, they kick, they elbow, they clinch, they take you down, and then it's like MMA. So kudos to them on that. But there's also a self-defense aspect to this. But I want to show... Uh, one more weapons-based thing, and then so look at this. It's pretty awesome, sword fighting. And this reminds me a little bit of Krabi Krabong, right? So, so again, here's what's cool about this. It's kind of giving you a flavor of everything. It's giving you elements of like Krabi Krabong, Moi Boran, Moi Thai, a little bit of Silat. It seems like a very, very all-encompassing system that absorbed a lot from countless Southeast Asian martial arts um, and the movements and the flavors of all those styles are there. Now, I mean, this is a demo. This is not intended to be like, look at us. We're super amazing at sword fighting. But again, it shows you that the art itself has a lot going on in it. So let me just jump here to the, the sparring. And again, they're going to do their own kind of version of the Y crew. But these guys do not dance as much. I'm just going to jump ahead. I don't think anyone needs to see another Y crew. See, they're kind of just more loose and relaxed. And this is what I would consider the more functional evolution of the style, right? Like they're fighting in a way that I feel like a good fighter should fight. They're not just kind of dancing with their hands down and putting their face out and their tongue out as the previous guy did. So this is, this is kind of where the style, in my opinion, shines in terms of their sparring. And again, I always give credit to styles that are striking styles that also allow you to continue with takedowns and, and ground fighting. And it's hard to find really effective striking styles like that. I have my qualms with MMA striking. And uh, let me talk about that for a minute. So here's my problem with MMA striking. Everyone in MMA, uh, kind of not everyone, that's a generalization. But in MMA, you notice a lot of people who are not as effective in the transition. You see guys who are good wrestlers and they'll punch you. And then you see the shift from striking to wrestling. It's like, I'm hitting you now. I'm wrestling you now. Or you'll see guys who are good at, at jits and they like kind of work to get you down. But there's not this really fluid transitional aspect to MMA that you see in styles like San Shao that really shine or even combat Sambo where the striking leads into the takedown. There's very few guys who do that. There are some and they came from styles like San Shao combat sambo they're better at kind of hitting you and that hit transitions into a takedown um and that's something that's really really important for striking it's something that's lacking in mma but it's something you get when you practice a style of striking that has strong fundamentals in striking but that also allows transitional takedowns so your punch leads into the takedown your kick leads into the takedown the guys kick on you that you catch leads into the takedown as opposed to being like now i'm hitting you now i'm wrestling you which is again what we see in mma more often than not um and so i think that i think that styles like this styles like sanchao styles like combat sambo ashihara that have a continuous flow of strikes to takedowns and it's part of the way you're taught in the transition are extremely effective um, and Muay Thai has it too. Muay Thai in the clinch does have some takedowns, but it's not really as takedown heavy. So you lose a little bit of that. There is also a self-defense aspect of this style. I'm going to show here. Right? Like this is a demo. She's wearing military gear. But you can see it's a little bit different, the movements. This looks like self-defense movements to me. Um, and I'm sure that, you know, she's effective also at the traditional stuff. But it's cool to see that there's almost like a military application to this. You know, look, I don't agree with all these movements. So I'll tell you, number one, you're not getting out of a rear naked choke by just turning because if it's tight, you're just not able to turn. And here with the knife, when she gets them and throws them away, I have a serious problem with that too. But it's just a demo. And it looks to me like they did have some effective self-defense moves when I watched more videos. So my final thoughts, let's wrap this up. I love the style. I would train the style if it was near me. It's not, it seems like it's still hard to find. Um, Again, it's like an amalgamation of countless Southeast Asian martial arts. Sometimes that can be a bad thing. Sometimes when you mix so many martial arts back into one, you do lose the specificity. 
But I do see that these guys have really nice classical kind of, like I said, that Southeast Asian flavor of striking wasn't lost. So I don't see that happening here. Do I think it's good for self-defense? Yeah, I actually do think this would be a good style for self-defense. I also think it would be a good style for tradition, art. So it gives you both ends of that, which I like. You know, I've talked about that before. Not everything is about fighting. Sometimes I do want a martial art because I like the culture, the history. And again, those kind, that kind of flavor of movement. And so this does seem to have that too. I don't really have anything negative to say about it. It seems like in their sparring, they go to the ground. They do fight other styles. And, you know, it's a style that, again, disappeared tragically and luckily was saved and elements of it were brought back. Here's my one question to people who may know this and be experts. How much of this, and I always think about this when it's like, there's so many styles out there that people are like, oh, this style was completely wiped down. And then this guy brought it back, but the guy didn't really bring it back. What he did is he interpreted what he believed it to be and then took elements from other martial arts and recreated it. Do you believe that's what happened here? Or do you believe that this, uh, this guy... Uh, really did find masters and really did kind of rebuild the style from scratch from what it really was. So again, leave your thoughts on that too below. And hey guys, like and subscribe. I didn't do as many jokes in this video. I know it was serious. I'm kind of in a serious mood. So you better like and subscribe. That's all I got. I don't know. I'm done.